Hi, I'm Bruce Boulding with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. When most people think fly fishing, they think trout. But fly fishing for warm water species has become more and more popular lately. And here in Washington, we have a tremendous diversity of warm water opportunities. Anything you can catch on hard tackle, you can catch on fly gear, including smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, panfish like yellow perch, bluegill, and crappie, as well as larger species like walleye and tiger muskie. Today we're in Banks Lake in Grant County and we're going to be fishing with David Williams and Michael Bennett. David travels all over the northwest targeting smallmouth bass, although he likes catching everything from trout to walleye. And uh, Michael's favorite species are steelhead and bass. So we're going to start off this morning fishing around the punch bowl area of Banks Lake near the state park. And we're going to be looking specifically for smallmouth bass, although in this area we could catch largemouth bass several species of panfish like yellow perch or crappie as well as uh, walleye even. So as we move around the lake we're going to be talking with David and Michael about the types of rods they prefer to use, their favorite flies and how they like to present them. So hop in the boat with us and let's go catch a bass on the fly. Sounds like a good time. Great. <laughs> David, I know when you fish on the Yakima, you like using a seven weight rod. So why don't you talk a little bit about that and then what your preferred rod in an environment like this is. Well, in, on, a, on a lake like this, um, I'm always fishing two flies, so I'm going to use a little bit uh, stronger rod than most people would. This is this is a seven. I've also got a six that I've used for uh, for top water this morning. It uh, it's got a got a fighting butt on it, uh, you know, because it, you know it just works a little better to get uh, get these hard fighting fish up, uh, get their heads up, and so I can I can release them. It's nine feet long. It's graphite. Oh, and you know, if anybody who who has a uh, has a steelhead rod, they've actually got a smallmouth bass rod. Anybody who has a trout fly, like a woolly bugger, they've got a smallmouth bass fly. So that's what we're doing today. It's a sinking line. Uh, you know, we're fishing you know relatively deep today, so uh, I put a little extra uh, shooting head of uh, on here to to get down to, uh, to the uh, you know 15, 18 feet that we're fishing. Alrighty, being typical uh, you know, fly fishers, we've got a wide assortment of uh, flies in different shapes and sizes and colors, but we're going to talk about three of, of my favorite. This one is called the chartreuse caboose, uh, and it has these nice wiggly rubber legs that, that look alive in the, uh, in the water, and of course it imitates nothing in real life. And then we have a, a generic bait fish pattern. Uh, it, it, uh, you know, it's, it's sparsely tied. It's got a little bit of weight on it, kind of like the redhead, maybe giving a little bit of a target for the uh, for the fish. And then um, 
a, a pattern called the Boo Radley that uh, presents a larger profile in the water. Uh, it, it's got uh, you know, soft, uh, you know, this is actually a red fox in front and then olive dyed rabbit uh, over the rear. And you know, both of those materials are you know, soft and they, they move uh, a lot in the water and they actually really look alive in the water and that attracts the fish. Uh, those are the three that I really like. So like David, I have a lot of flies that I carry with me as well, but you can really break them down into a few different categories. Um, first, uh, this is one of my favorite crayfish patterns. I call it the ultra craw. And uh, primarily fishing this on full sinking lines, and that might be at 10 feet deep, that might be at 25 feet deep, but we're trying to keep it down close to the bottom in real rocky areas where the crayfish live. Next would be um, bait fish patterns like this, and they'll vary in size, um, maybe something on the larger side like this that's imitating salmon smolt or kokanee or smelt, um, perhaps something a little more generic, such as this one, or maybe a, a little sculpin pattern. So uh, little panfish, sculpin, salmon smolt, and so on. And with those, we'll fish full sinking lines, intermediate lines, even floating lines sometimes, just depending on what depth we think the fish are, are eating them at. Finally, we've got uh, the poppers. And um, poppers or gurglers like this that will fish in the surface uh, with, with floating lines. And primarily low light level periods are the best early morning, late evening, during warmer parts of the year. And we'll simply cast them out, look for shady areas around docks or rocks, uh, and pop them on the surface and wait for, wait for one to come up and eat it. Thanks for coming along with us on Banks Lake today. Started out a little bit slow this morning, but we ended up catching and losing a few really nice <laughs> smallmouth bass. I'd like to thank our special guest today, David Williams, author of the recently released book, Fly Fishing for Western Smallmouth, and Michael Bennett, owner of Pacific Fly Fishers Fly Shop in Mill Creek in Snohomish County. Did you guys have a good time today? We had a good time. We yeah, had, a good had time. an excellent time. All Do right. it again. Yeah. Great, me too. And I hope you folks learned something new today, because I sure did. If you have any questions about where smallmouth bass are located or any other freshwater game fish in Washington, check out Fish Washington. It's our searchable database on the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife website, or just Google Fish Washington. Also, remember before you go out fishing, take a look at the sport fishing rules pamphlet for the water you're on and the species you're fishing for to see whether or not there's any special regulations. And remember, have a good time, be safe, and fish Washington. <laughs>